Hello, welcome to another Sonic Lab special. Today we've got Russ Hughes, who you may recognise from Pro Tools Expert, a fantastic blog dedicated to all things Pro Tools. It is. He's here today to talk to us about e-instruments session keys, right? Sure. Which is a, a pair of um, lovingly sampled grand pianos. I guess the first thing I would ask is, We've got quite a lot of sample grand pianos. You know, why, why do we need uh, more? In fact, that was the, the first question I asked when I was introduced by a, a, a mate of mine, uh, Pete Gorges, uh, who was at Air, introduced me to Thomas, who runs e Instruments, and said, "Would I take a look and, and help them a bit with uh, with this?" Uh, and uh, I thought, another piano? I've, I've I've probably seen all the pianos I want to see in the sampling world uh, for one lifetime. But then I saw what they'd done with it, uh, and uh, I was pleasantly surprised that it was more than just. Uh, another great piano, which it is. If you want to just have a great sample piano, then it's one of the best ones I've heard, and I think you've been playing with it too. So you've... you've yeah, I mean, the dynamics are very impressive. Um, let, we've got two models though, right? Yeah. One's a, a Steinway, yeah. and the other one's a Yamaha. Of course you can't say that, but yes. That's, oh. That's true, of course. A I, read, I read it from the blurb uh, on the website. Oh, is that right? Be Forgive me. We must be able to say that then. Yeah, but uh, yeah, one's, one's a Steinway and one's a Yamaha, and obviously, any piano, like any instrument of an acoustic nature, has a different tone, has a different personality. And so they were two good ones for them to choose. Uh, and you can buy each one of them separately, or you can buy them as a bundle. So the sampling process, I'm keen to sort of find out what makes that, because obviously E instruments are kind of known for their meticulous nature. Is it the same process applied to this? Surgically, if I was ever sick, I'd probably want Thomas to actually operate on me, because the way he <laughs> samples stuff. Uh, I think you asked me earlier, is it some kind of IKEA process? Is there like a, a mechanical yeah. finger? No, it really is. that they, they, It starts with performance. So they go into a studio, a great space. So, it's, so first it starts with a space, then they go into a great studio, and then they will go through and meticulously sample each note at different samples uh, until they get it right. Uh, so you can imagine that could take a long time because they believe that the kind of mechanical thing is just not going to do it. So it's, 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 it's sampled and sampled through fantastic microphones and through fantastic preamps. And those are surgical too, so they're not like analog mics, so they're not like vintage Neumanns or, or vintage right. preamps. It's all, it's all very surgical because as far as the team at instruments are concerned, it has to be. What you want you the sound of the instrument. Yeah, you want the sound of the, the instrument, of the mic, not, so. your, not your version of the instrument. Or, or that, that, so that's, what, that's how it works. So um, what are we going to listen to first? Well, let's look, at, let, let's look at the S. They both work in the same way, so we'll, 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 we'll probably do the sound difference at the end. But why these are different is that when they came to put them together, first I wanted them to sound great. So you can, you can play them as a great piano. So there's that. Uh, so there's, there's great perform... Beautiful. Yeah, that just rings out, doesn't it? Yeah, it just rings out. And the, the harmonics are there, and the sympathetics are there, and everything's there. So there's two versions. In each one, the Y and the S. We're on the S here. So we've got lid open, and then we've got lid off. So you've got two different versions. So often, often in studios, they'll take the lid off, get the mics in nice and... It's, just, it's much more immediate. Yeah, you can hear there's yeah. a sort of closeness to the string. Yeah. Isn't that closeness. And so straight away, just switch between those two. Uh, and then, and that's in concert mode, isn't it? Because that would traditionally be throwing the sound out towards the audience, right? Yeah, exactly. That's 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 part of it as well. So you've got the basics of that, and then you can go to the tonality, and you can then start going through the re the resonance and the envelope of the sound and the noise of the the, uh, the hammers and the actual piano on each one of these. Uh, then you can start getting a bit more kind of audio. So we've got things like we've got a full equaliser built in. We've got a stereo width built in, there's a compressor built in, there's reverb built in, and there's delay built in as well. Because these were aimed at not only those that want a great piano, but, but as you know, with any instrument, half of the thing is the, is the instrument, the other half is the performance. Yeah. So there are people out there uh, that may want a great piano, but don't have a great piano player. So we'll be looking at that and how performance works in a minute. So that was part of the conversation, and that's partly where the animator comes in. But the other thing is that if you want to use this for things like sound design, we can start going back so we can just listen to the mechanics if you want. That's uncanny, right. And we can bring that in. Or we can, and this is what we call the pentamorph, uh, where you can then start moving between things. So. And now we've got the acoustics, and then we've got reverse coming in as well, so we can play. 
Oh, so it's like a little tape, like a, like yeah. a reverse. Yeah, or we can go all the way. So if, if you're a sound designer, you can go, so this is called Aerial then. Right. But the great thing is, as I say, you can use the pentamorph and you can move between it. So we could, as I say, we could bring, bring some piano and some reverse in, so. And then we could start like putting a big reverb into that. Widening out the stereo. And then we come back to the tonality as well. And then we can start dealing with the reverse volume, the attack time, and get some really nice kind of stuff, ethereal stuff for movies. So the aerial is beautiful for that. Oh, interesting. So there's more of a sound design aspect to this. So there's a sound design. So this was the whole point. Let's get a great piano, but then let's not stop there. Let's think about how we can help sound designers to design for movies. But then let's think about how we can work with songwriters as well. So if we go back to a standard sound again, so, the, so let's go to the concert sound. We then have this whole feature called the animator, which allows people to start using this is a basis for inspiration for a song. So now the animator switched on. So if I play a C. Right, so they're kind of like effectively MIDI patterns in there or something. Yeah, they're performances. They're really great performances. But then it's, it's, it's quite smart as well. So we play it with a C. Put the A in the bass now. Then the performance goes one step further because the modulation wheel then changes the complexity. There's different parts for it as well. So you can either change these with the, key, the keys at the bottom of the keyboard. If you had an 88 note keyboard, then C minus two allows you to do switching live, or we can just uh, just get one of these going now. Right, so variations on the pattern. And there's everything in there. There's everything from movie type stores to, 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 to just good rock pianos that are stonking away. Then the pitch bend works as volume and intensity, velocity. Oh, when you pull it right down like that, that's when you, the thing that impressed me when I heard it yesterday was just the level of you know, detail, the detail. In really in the low velocities, it's very, uh, it's very pleasing. Which reminds me, one of the questions we get asked about this is, what about the velocity layers? You asked me earlier about the sampling yeah, I mean, and how many velocity layers. That's a trick as well. There's a special algorithm in there that isn't just a basic, like as you know, often with sampling, what you have is you have a lot of layers and there's just switches going on. Well, the way this is done is using a special proprietary algorithm that they've come up with, which means that now it's doing, it's doing switching in a different kind of way. So it's not just that kind of switch, 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 switch. It's using the power of contact, the scripting, what has made these guys really popular and really famous with things like Session Horns, uh, and there's a new one, Session Horns Pro, actually came out yesterday. Uh, and this latest one is their scripting uh, power and their scripting gift, right. and, that, and that's what's really cool about this. So That's often the case in the contact world, isn't it? Yeah. Got, they've got an arch yeah. coder who can just do yeah. all this amazing stuff. Half, right? of it's, half of it's the sampling and half of it's the scripting. And so that's all built in there so that you get this, this lovely stuff going on, as I say, with the samples in particular. Uh, that. Can you affect the feel of this as well? Because obviously this is very straight. I mean, can you kind of swing it or can you change the tempo? You know, that sort yeah, of Yeah, yeah, you can, you can swing it here. Okay. And presumably all of this stuff is real-time controllable. Real-time controllable. There's a really nice feature as well. We'll talk about which we'll jump on in a sec, but there's, it's real-time controllable. You can then record these things into your door right now I think we're going to get to it. You, were going to, you asked me earlier. Yeah, I was wondering whether or not the, uh, the performances are spat out as, as MIDI performances, and then, you know, so you can tweak and edit after, after you've played it through the instruments, effectively. No, they're proprietary, they're proprietary uh, performances at the moment, uh, but it should be coming in a later release. It's a limitation that's there at the moment, but uh, they're working to get it in a later release. So right now, what you could do, if I recorded, what would happen if I recorded right now? record that C note right. on the door timeline. Uh, yeah, because I, uh, one thing I noticed is this is all working off the white keys, right? Yeah. So the, and the black keys then become modifiers for the, the playback. It depends. Well, at the moment, actually, they're, they're actually part of the chord structure. So if I'm playing a C and then play a, a B flat. Ah, OK.
Nice. And it's taking velocity from the information from the keyboard. From the keyboard, well. and then also. So you can. And then we can make it less complex with the modulation wheel. It's very, very quiet. We need Bjork, don't we? <laughs> Smart chords, I want to talk about that as well, because some people, again, they might not even be a keyboard player, but they might have pads. We've got this keyboard here with these pads built in. So built into this as well, we've got the smart chord built in and we could choose pads instead of keys and then we can assign chords to our pads. So you could, if you've got machine or you've got Ableton uh, push right. and you can actually map whatever chords you want there and then the modifiers as well. So I guess, yeah, the more pads you've got, the more kind of, I guess with push, it could be a very yeah. powerful system. So Although there's people, only, uh, what's that? Uh, 16. 16, right. Yeah, okay. four by four, four. So it's, it's, like, it's like machine or it's like the pads that are on most right. standard keyboards like this. It's an audio axiom that's doing this. So the, the kind of punchline of this is you get great pianos, but then you get enormous amounts of A, sonic flexibility and second performance flexibility because what they set out to do was give not only a, a, a great sounding piano, but a piano that would have the power to give you ideas. Uh, some might think, well, isn't this kind of like kind of uh, Casio organ sort of one finger playing? Well, it's not about that. It's about giving people inspiration. So you could get this out and you could start just trying some chord ideas out. Right. And I've done it in a couple of songs actually and tried it. And, and already there's some, some really like we've, just had a great review, uh, great uh, recommendation through from from Rick Simpson, who's just finished the latest Coldplay album, and he's been playing with it, and he loves reverse it. Reverse piano, <laughs> yeah, reverse piano, or those those because Rick Simpson's done some really great work on putting those kind of pianos in the background. If you listen to the track like Magic that was recently out, there's a piano bed in the background. You can't tell it's a piano, but it's got that kind of reversey right back in the mix thing, and so it takes pianos to a different place. So I think some people will still want just a standard piano, and you've got that or you can go really, really right. deep. Okay, um, I mean, one thing I'd, I'd like to hear again is just the sort of, uh, maybe we could listen to the uh, the Y, because yep. we'll be listening to the Steinway, right? Yeah, let's get the Y in, so let's pull that in, and actually watch the load time on it as well. Bang, we're in. Wow, that's fast. It's fast, yeah. <laughs> Nice. It's. Uh, I think the thing I found yesterday when I was playing with it, it, it's one of those instruments you could just sort of play all the notes all at the same time. It's almost like when a, an original electromechanical, you know, just everything sounds nice. You just let it ring out, and it just. And well, it's, does, does it? Is it from RAM or is there disc streaming going on there? It's obviously using. They they work very hard to use the latest version of of Contact. In fact, they they they're very, in very close contact with the guys. Forgive the pun at oh. Native Instruments because they are constantly pushing the boundaries of this instrument. In fact. Uh, on their, their session horns, they really did push it to its limit of what you could do in terms of how many samples you could have in the library. And so, yes, it's going to use disk stream. It's going to make sure this is running on a laptop. Uh, it's a MacBook Pro, uh, and it, you saw the load time, and there's no glitching, there's no dropouts. And I notice on the interface there, there's uh, uh, support for three piano pedals, which are obviously not many of us. We've only got the sustain pedal plugged in at the moment. Yeah, it, it truly is. It's take it. it it's trying to think of all the options that are available. It's trying to think there's going to be some people that are going to use this just as a fantastic piano who've got a classical background, who are a three pedal person. But at the same time, it's thinking of those people who may just want to use it as a writing tool yeah. uh, or a sound designing tool. So it's really ticking a lot of the boxes uh, as opposed to there's some great instruments already out there in piano terms, uh, but I don't think any of them has the power of this one. Right. So perhaps um, we need to get onto pricing and availability and that kind of stuff. Are they available now, right? It's available now. It's been on the market for about a month. It's, it's, it's got some great responses. It's got some uh, great reviews. It's got some, uh, some great artist endorsements already, and there's more coming. So you can buy them as separate instruments. You can buy them as the, as the Yamaha or the Starlight, or you can buy them as a bundle, 99 uh, euros, dollars each, or 159 for the bundle. Okay, and it's download? Uh, download, yeah, four point, uh, quite a big download. So uh, you might want to make a coffee while you're waiting, depending on where you live. <laughs> okay, okay. So there you have the E Instruments session keys. Um, we're playing it in uh, contact standalone. Presumably, it's got all the well contacts. So it's going to be AU, VST, all the usual suspects. Yeah, it right? will work in any door virtually that that will host uh, contact. Of course, it works standalone as well as we say. So you're working in Pro Tools, Cubase, 
uh, all, all, the, all, all, the, all the usual suspects. Okay, so I want to say thanks very much, Russ, for coming in. Um, I think it's only fair that you play us a little, at, play us out a little with some more piano. And want to I hear. wish you played him in a bit. Yes, we'll get the soft focus going for you. <laughs> Where's the uh, candelabra? What's wrong with you guys? We couldn't order one in in time. I'm well, let's just go through some of the sounds as we play out then. So that's that's the acoustic piano, but you, there's lots of presets as you can see. There's some very, uh, so there's like a roomy piano there we could play. So. Uh, and let's just go through some of that. And you can just, you can just, and again, a bit more wild as you go. And then we can use the pentamorph a bit more, just move between those things as well. Come back to just a standard piano again. There's a bit of attack on the sound. Yeah, there. we've got the attack, we can go in there, we can go into the, the, the tonality here do weird things with it so. So you can really go, you can go crazy. You can, uh, if you really want to do some Philip Glass stuff, you can really go for it. Or you can get normal again and you can get to just a beautiful acoustic piano.